In late 2009, for what would be the 2010 model year in the United States, Lamborghini introduced an additional car to the Gallardo lineup that they called the Lamborghini Gallardo LP550-2 Valentino Balboni. And the car was built to celebrate the retirement of Lamborghini's chief test driver in Italy, it's a national policy that if you work for the same company for 40 years, it's mandatory that you retire and there's some kind of requirement that the company pays for something in your retirement. And obviously with Ferruccio Lamborghini dead, Valentino had really become the face and the figurehead of the Lamborghini brand. And so there was a lot to be excited about with this car, but when they brought it out, Lamborghini did three things very, very wrong. The first was just the way that they presented what the car was made it a real sales challenge because this was in 2010 when we were trying to sell these cars and for the last 11 years since the 1999 Lamborghini Diablo SV, all Lamborghinis had been all-wheel drive. The Dash 2 in LP550-2 meant that this was the first two-wheel drive Lamborghini that we had ever tried to sell because again, most of the dealerships had turned over in ownership since the Diablo era and we had sold them based on the strengths of all-wheel drive, the stability, the handling, the confidence that the car gives you relative to the Ferraris at the time. So it was a very strange thing to describe to a customer that as a retirement present, the guy who's driven almost every Lamborghini ever built wanted to build a car that's different than what we've been telling you is the best form of the car. And so we had a really, really tough time getting customers to understand that. Now, fortunately, but also a little bit unfortunately, Lamborghini had noticed that we were really having a hard time selling 2009 LP560s in the prior year. It was the kind of mid-cycle refresh of the car that took from the Gen 1 Gallardo, the 5-liter cars, to the 5.2-liter direct injection cars. And they were much better, but they weren't so much better that everybody was just jumping up and down to upgrade from their 06, 07, 08 cars. And so a lot of those were still sitting around as the Balbonis rolled in with the prior model year and some rebates and things like that against them. But Lamborghini wasn't gonna make any more all-wheel drive coupes for the year, so there are no 2010 LP560 coupes, but there are LP560 Spiders. That was the model year in the US that they launched the convertible version of the LP560. So if somebody came in and maybe they weren't sure about a coupe or a convertible, now they had to decide, do they also want all-wheel drive or two-wheel drive. And eventually, into 2012, we got to where there were six different versions of the Gallardo. There was the coupe and the convertible, LP550, LP560, and LP570. And so we had a really, really hard time saying that the guy who should know what the best Lamborghini is wants a Lamborghini that's different than any Gallardo that we've been selling since 2004. So that was a challenge. The second one was pricing. The cars were between $242,000 and $245,000, maybe two sixty dollars if you optioned them with ceramic brakes. And that was a lot. In fact, it was more than a comparable LP560. And unlike a Superleggera or a Stradale or a Scuderia, which the market had sort of become familiar with, you weren't getting a lot of special materials like carbon fiber. You weren't getting different aerodynamics. Honestly, all you got was a little less weight because it didn't have the all-wheel drive system, a gold and white stripe down the center of the seats, white center console, and a gold and white stripe on the hood of the car. Unless the car was white, it became silver and gold. And so it was a little bit of a strange color combination. It worked really well on black cars, it worked okay on silver cars, and you know, honestly, they, they did not sell worth anything. They only made 250 of them. I would estimate that about 30% of those, maybe 75, came to the US, and they just set and they set. And eventually Lamborghini had to come out with a $20,000 rebate. So with the initial 10% or so markup that we had, we could sell them for right around 200 grand. And that became the sweet spot for selling these cars because as they came out with the B Calore the next year, which was also an LP550-2 with a little bit of a revised suspension to solve some wheel hop, and they kept the LP550 as part of the lineup, people bought them. At, at 200 grand they would sell, but we didn't make any money there. And so it took forever to get rid of them. I think we had four or five of them. Almost all of them were black or silver. And if you painted the wheels gold, the black cars looked really good. I'm not a black car guy, but I came very close to buying one that we sold a few times and had a couple of track crashes and stuff like that. And the other problem was they were almost all e-gear. Now, Valentino, wanted a manual car, but they knew that the market preference at the time, even till now, was for e-gear cars. And so since they weren't generally ordered by customers, they were ordered for inventory by the dealers, almost all of them are e-gear cars. And so we didn't really know what to think. The customers didn't know what to think. They didn't sell well. But the biggest problem with the whole thing related to the car is they didn't give Valentino one. Now, they gave him one that he could drive eventually 
in the US. And I told the story about that car a little bit. Honestly, it's one of the biggest cars that got away for me personally. And it wasn't just it got away, it was ripped from my hands. Now, when Lamborghini buys back cars under Lemon Law, Different manufacturers have different policies, but Lamborghini's policy at the time is that those cars would eventually be reconditioned. They'd fix whatever the issue was, at least to the best they could. And in this car's case, it was a repeated check engine light. And the car had been lemon law through a Northeastern dealer, and it really had stayed in Lamborghini inventory for a long time so that Valentino would have a car to drive. And so you'd see him at events in this blue Chaloom ceramic brake, gorgeous Balboni Gallardo. And he had signed it, obviously. It had been on different television shows. And to me, if you look at the whole span of 14,022 cars produced over 11 years, I think that is the ultimate U.S. Gallardo. It has a lot of significance for the brand. It was driven by the man himself. It was a, in a bunch of press appearances, and it was so cool. And now, of course, the Lemon Law title brand was just the kiss of death from a value perspective, which is exactly what I like. Now, the problem with it was you couldn't finance the car. So Lamborghini's procedure at the time was to auction them off just amongst the Lamborghini dealers on Mannheim, or OVE, the dealer auction platform. And so you had to be a franchise dealer to bid, even to see the cars. And we bought a lot of press cars and a few Lemon Law cars this way. And so I was really excited. I told the general manager, I was like, look, I wanna buy this car for me. I'm gonna keep it. I'll use it to lead our mountain drives and do the things that we do. I'm really, really excited about it. I think it's the perfect Gallardo. And still at the time, this must have been 20, 13, the cars were not super appreciated as manuals. People were starting to get the idea that, yeah, they're pretty rare, but we still like the paddles and that's what people were ordering. And so there wasn't a lot of competition to bid for this car, but they released the auction such that the ending was going to be like on a Saturday afternoon. Saturdays at car dealerships are super busy. Nobody has time to look at an auction to watch and bid, and proxy bids didn't work very well in those circumstances. And so, you know, I, I was the only one, I think, watching the bid at the end. And I won the car for $80,000. Now, at the time, uh, writing a check for $80,000, even today writing a check for $80,000 is a big inconvenience. I had to sell a couple of cars that I had in order to pull it out. It was gonna be my only car, my daily driver, but I would own it outright. I wouldn't have a car payment for pretty much the first time in my exotic car owning life. So I was super excited, super pumped. I've got everything set up and Monday comes around and they tell us that another dealer complained that their bid didn't go through. What happened obviously is they noticed that it went super cheap and they wanted it badly. It was Bentley Gold Coast, which is also Lamborghini Chicago. So they end up relisting it and we run these guys up, but they end up bidding like up to $130,000. They buy the car for inventory. They sit on it for forever. It takes them over a year to sell the car. Now it's in a great collection sitting next to an orange Diablo GT. But that is one of those cars that I really, really wanted. And that was the car that Valentino drove so much. So I was pretty upset to have missed out on that car, but you know, to buy cars like this, you have to try to buy a lot because a lot of them work out exactly like that. And so over the years we would sell them, we'd get them back in on trade and they usually wouldn't have that many miles. And one issue when a dealerships stock in cars, meaning they input them into whatever management software they use and they show up on the website, usually before they're photographed or anything like that, is that they don't do a great job of decoding. In fact, I recently put out an Instagram post that it, a couple weeks ago, Two different people contacted me, one looking for a manual LP640, one looking for an SV, and both of them wanted to find a car under a million dollars, which is becoming almost impossible these days. And so I just put a post out there, and almost everybody sent me a couple of LP640s that show up as manuals, even though they're absolutely e-gear cars, because the software just doesn't know the difference. So that happened to us when we took in a silver Balboni Gallardo on trade. So it showed up as a manual, there's no pictures, there's no information, because we had just gotten it in probably the day or two before. And I'm I'm sitting at my desk and we had these phone systems that you know you'd see like a caller ID show up but it was generally the responsibility of the receptionist to answer and then she would forward the call to whoever it was most appropriate for but I saw on the caller ID Valentino Balboni and then I see her pick up and she's kind of confused and struggling with the accent and it becomes clear it's Valentino Balboni and I'm like oh, send that one over here to me please and so I pick up the phone and he says uh, hi, uh, this is uh, Valentino Barboni, and I'm calling about the 2010 Lamborghini Gallardo. Uh, Valentino Barboni, uh, is the car really available, and is it a manual? And I'm like, well, sir, it's a tremendous honor to speak to you. I'm so excited. We love your cars. We love what everything you've done for the brand. I'm speechless, which is rare for me. And I said, sir, I'm so sorry. Actually, it is an e-gear car. It's a very, very nice car. I think it had about 1,500 or 2,000 miles. It was perfect. But I presume you are looking for a manual car. He said, yes, yes, that's the ultimate version of the car. I wish they would have made them all as manual. I told them to do that, but they didn't. And I'm like, 
Trust me, I get it. I would love it. And I told Tim the story of the blue car. He said, oh, I love that car. I wish they would have let me buy it, but I couldn't afford it and I couldn't finance it. I said, I was in the same boat, but uh, like, I just had to have it. And so unfortunately he had seen that it just sat up there. And even at that point, I think he had like another investor that was going to kind of partner with the car because who wouldn't do that? Who wouldn't become the co-owner of Balboni's Balboni? I mean, I probably would have done that given the opportunity, but regardless, we didn't have the car for him. There wasn't the car for him. He had seen the blue car still for sale, but it just, that one didn't work from a financial perspective. A couple of years later, he did end up having another one to drive. You've seen it on an adventure drives. It's an orange Balboni that carries UK plates. The partner in the car is from the UK. But again, Lamborghini didn't give him the car. I just, it seems like such an oversight. But at the time, Lamborghini, like every auto manufacturer, was struggling pretty hard. And so just totally writing off or not getting anything for a car like that, I guess what wouldn't work. But if you're not going to give the guy the car, why put his name on the side of all of them? Premier Financial Services makes it easier and more affordable than you could possibly imagine to own your dream car. Their simple lease is one of the most powerful tools in the world of exotic car financing. You get all the benefits like the tax savings and the low payments of a lease with all the additional benefits that you'd normally find in a traditional finance arrangement. You can build up equity, you can pay it off early, you can trade in and out of cars because you get a very clear and easy to understand amortization table to understand what your payoff will be any month throughout your term. And all the while, the amazing team from Premier Financial Services will be right there to help you along the way. They've been supporters of the VinWiki channel now for five years in a row, so we can't thank them enough for that, but mostly we're thankful for the fact that they can help you make it easier than ever to own your dream car. Check them out now.